the secluded area of Blakely Avenue on the island where it was believed that three suspects took a briefcase from the three victims. Now, I don't know what was in the briefcase, but it was taken from the victims as they sat in their truck. Then after they took the briefcase, two of the suspects opened fire on the truck and they actually killed all three of the victims. Only one suspect named, which was, uh, his name was uh, Douglas John Stanfield. He pled guilty and was convicted of the crimes. Now, there has been reports of disembodied screams thought to be from Anne-Marie. The apparition of a male has also been spotted wandering in the area. Such a tragic, tragic case indeed. Now, moving on with that, this next case, it takes us to Colorado, where Sunday, March 17th, will mark the sixth anniversary of the murder of Colorado Prison Chief Tom Clements. It was on this day that Tom would be murdered by a parolee by the name of Evan Evan used a pizza uniform as a disguise to kill Clements at his monument home. It was thought that there was a possibility that Evan was acting on orders from a white supremacist prison gang. Although Evan wasn't formally charged, an investigation had been ongoing for this crime. Evan ended up being killed in a shootout with Texas lawmen on March 21st 2013 on on a different charge on under different circumstances so this murder has remained actually unsolved because no one was able to be charged there have been reports of the colorado prison chief tom clements's voice being heard as well as the apparition of tom being spotted in various places throughout the prison my condolences for all involved. Such a tragic event. And, you know, sometimes what you find is <coughs> people don't really sometimes haunt where they were killed or where they lived. Sometimes they haunt other places that were of great importance to them. So evidently, the prison was pretty important to Tom. This next one takes us to St. Louis, Missouri, where police were called to a shooting shortly after 11 p.m., March 17, 2018, so fairly recently, in the 4500 block of Nebraska Avenue, where they found a man by the name of Scott in the street with multiple gunshot wounds. He was pronounced dead at the hospital. Scott had been standing outside his home in the block when a burgundy Buick sedan stepped, stopped in front of his house. And according to court documents, the driver began to argue with Scott over money that Scott owed him. And then he shot Scott three times. The murderer was found to be Vince Griffin. He was 35 years old and was charged with first degree murder. It has also been reported that male voices have been heard in the area of the shooting when no one is outside and no one can be seen. And it has appeared uh, by someone that was passing by that there was a body in the road, and when they stopped to help the person, it vanished before their eyes. Very spooky indeed. And with that, We will be back right after this short break. You are listening to Ghost Talk Radio on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. Son of a... Hey, son. 
Mother f <laughs> Uh, son? What are you doing? Hey, Mom. I'm getting ready to listen to Periscope Uncensored. By expanding your vocabulary. Well, it is uncensored. Son, the uncensored part of Periscope Uncensored is Jax and I getting down to brass tacks with all aspects of the paranormal. There's no fluff on our show. So, no off-color commentary? I didn't say that. Awesome! <laughs> Son? Uh, I just hit my head. Oh boy, I'll go get you an ice pack. Catch Periscope Uncensored Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, only on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Oh, come on. I'm Southern, but... Um, nope. That'll do. Hello. I am Kat Hobson, host of Paranormal Experience here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I enjoy having guests from all areas of the paranormal, from ghosts to ufology to cryptids and beyond. You'll find some of the best researchers in their fields bringing you some great information. Join me on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 p. Eastern here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 23 minutes after the hour. Since 1948, Fate Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown. All of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition, bringing you the unusual, macabre, strange, and bizarre. Join host Cat Hops Sunday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 23 minutes after the hour. 22 minutes past the hour. Welcome back to Ghost Talk Radio with me as your host, Shelly Robertson. If you just tuned in, I invite you all to join us in chat at wbhm-db.com where you can ask me any questions you might have or if you have some haunting stories of your own regarding St. Patrick's Day, you can share us with them there. If you missed the first part of the show, no worries. You can catch the show archive on Spreaker, Google Play, iTunes, and iHeartRadio at your leisure. Just before the break, y'all, we're talking about St. Patrick's Day hauntings. And I'll give a little shout out to Debbie Daly out there. Hi. Um, I also got to say, this is worth mentioning to me because I am a very, very avid follower of serial killers and very knowledgeable of almost all of them. Just so y'all know, John Wayne Gacy, the one who dressed up as, as the clown, he was born on March 17th in 1942. John Wayne Gacy was an American serial killer and rapist. He sexually assaulted, tortured, and murdered at least 33 teenage boys and young men between 1972 and 1978 in Cook County, Illinois. So, and speaking of serial killers, Richard Ramirez, let's talk about him for a minute. He was an American serial killer, rapist, and burglar of the greater Los Angeles area, and uh, later also in San Francisco. He was also known as the Night Stalker. It was on March 17th, 1985. You won't believe this. Richard Ramirez would kill his second and third victims. On this night, he attacked a gal named Maria Hernandez, and she escaped. So Richard killed her roommate, and later on that evening, he killed another lady. Reports of screams have been heard in the areas of these murders. A female apparition has also been spotted with 
terrified and scared looks on her face. How horrific. Richard Ramirez was arrested, charged, and convicted of several murders. He spent nearly 24 years on death row. However, he was not executed, folks. He died from complications related to B-cell lymphoma. So I guess he did end up getting what he ended, you know, what he deserved in the end. Such a monster, right? This next case, it's going to take us to Ringtown Valley, Pennsylvania. There was a fella by the name of Albert Shinsky, and he was 17 years old when he first encountered this gal named Susan Mummy. And Susan Money, Mummy was also dubbed the Witch of Ringtown Valley. Years earlier, this woman, Susan Mummy, she had a premonition of her husband's death at the powder mill while he worked, okay? Now, this premonition, it had come true. Ever since then, the people in and around Ringtown had regarded her with fear, and they, they were like, scared of her, and that's how she got her name, the Witch of Ringtown. Now, Shinsky, he later told police how one day, while he was near her home, he caught Susan Mummy staring at him. From that day forward, according to Shinsky, his life changed. He became depressed and lethargic, as well as utterly obsessed with the notion that Mummy had placed a hex on him. He felt invisible hands pressing down on his shoulders, and he said that Mummy called a spirit from the sky to torment him. He described a huge black cat with green eyes that came into his room as he slept, and it grew so big at one time it filled the room, and it almost suffocated him. Shinsky couldn't rest because of this, and he couldn't escape, so he went to local doctors and priests, but they felt that no one could help him. Finally, on the evening of March 17, 1934, Shinsky took a shotgun, and this is just so bizarre. Shinsky took a loaded shotgun and loaded it with a magic bullet, folks, that he acquired from a local hex doctor, okay? And I'm sure the hex doctor saw him coming and charged him a pretty penny for it. Anyways, Shinsky fired it through the window of Susan Mummy's farmhouse. The shot killed her. When the police interrogated Shinsky about the slaying, Shinsky confessed readily, saying that the magic bullet had been the only way he could kill Mummy and that killing her was the only way he could be free from her hex. Doctors who examined him returned a diagnosis of dementia, and they declared him unfit to, send, to stand trial. All right. Instead, they sent him to Fairview State Hospital for the criminally insane instead of sending him to death row. All right. And... It was by a crazy turn of events. He was released from the state hospital in 1975, and he later died in his own home um, in 1983. And there have been so many reports of hauntings coming from both Albert and Susan's places. At each respective location, disembodied voices have been heard, as well as male and female apparitions have been spotted. Ironically, someone has also reported seeing a see-through-like apparition of a cat. Now, is that, like, very creepy indeed? Um, we have a a person in chat by the name of Deb, and she asked me if I have heard of the Houston, Texas killer. And actually, Deb, I have. <laughs> um, I was actually looking over that case earlier this week. 
and we may include that one on another sh 